You are now drilling. And there we go. That is how we do it. Royal marriage from Fuddle, sure. And your relations are very, very high. Can we start the annexation process? Yes, yes, we can. Okay. We're starting to annex Fuddle. And then it's just going to be Hajaz after that. And they are currently drilling. Marvellous. Alright, good, good, good. So we do need to get some manpower back again. We did lose a fair amount, especially because of the uh, poorly timed uh, rebels. Also, Byzantium is actually growing. You've taken Athens out. Is, is this a game where the Byzantines are actually going to survive? Because that would be kind of crazy and also awesome. Nobles demand privileges. The privileges of the nobility have been under continuous assault as Jambalut has attempted to centralise more and more control. The nobles have finally lost their patience and are demanding that they be given back what they believe is rightfully theirs. So we can lose five loyalty in the Amirs and we get unrest for ten years. Or we lose ten prestige. I will accept your rightful claims. Please don't hurt me. And also, uh, we can probably get one more technology, and then everything else is going to go into development. So, in fact, military can go into development right now. Unless, of course, I can increase your loyalty to above, 50, uh, above 60, which I can totally do. There we go, even cheaper development. Aha! I should probably have waited on that, actually, until I had more development to use. And... What do we want to sort this by? Probably the value. Where is Fayum? Um. Because, yeah, that's what I want to see. Ah, here we go. Maximum manpower plus 290 versus here. 353, 290, 290, 290. So why is this one rated higher? Oh, plus we get Renaissance in these places. Um, in that case, I probably do want to go for the cheaper one. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go with Fayum. Except that they have some autonomy. But is Fayum uh, noble? No, it's Burkhas. Oh no, the Burkhas are modifying it. These are owned by the Amirs because they are getting uh, increasing loyalty. So yeah, we're going to go and grab the cheap ones. Like so. Good. And we'll keep on doing that over time. And Merchant Guilds have plus 64. So we, we have a little bit of leeway there for uh, increasing the development for the other stuff. Cool. All constructions are going well. Can I give a relatively brief overview of what the DLC adds? Sure. I mean, basically, I just read through the wiki whenever I say this, but uh, new governments for the many of the countries in the Middle East, including mechanics for the Egyptian Mamluk government, which we are playing at the moment, Persian theocracy, tribal federations, and the heirs of Timur. Um, so, yeah, a load of the Timurids and the Timurid vassals have their own government form. Trade policies for merchants, so you can... Uh, promote profiteering, espionage, military diplomacy, and religion propagation. Islamic schools, a wide range of Muslim disciplines which offer unique perks. Um, so, for example, I went with the development cost reduction school, even though I am a different branch of Sunni. 
Army professionalism, which is the uh, drill and discipline, which you've seen me doing with the cavalry units, which makes the cavalry units stronger, or makes the, the drilled units stronger. It means that generals can gain uh, additional skills for themselves. And also the army professionalism, which unlocks new abilities for your army. Uh, development can now be exploited as well as increased, so you can reduce it in exchange for a quick influx of cash or manpower or whatever. Iktar taxes, which means you can impose special taxes every 20 years depending on what culture you are. Uh, new national ideas, missionary actions. New missionary actions? I wonder what they are. Uh, Turkish janissaries and other mechanics. Plus, there are now new trade goods, so livestock, incense, glass, paper and gems. The map of the Middle East has changed a fair amount. Uh, addition of religion and culture to the courtroom. So, it's had some impact. For example, if I have an Egyptian advisor... He costs less because of my Mameluk government, meaning that same culture advisors cost less. Uh, there are new ideas. There are two new buildings, which is the mill and the farm, uh, to basically account for the new resources that have been added and new achievements. I wonder what the missionary things are. Can I see that anywhere? Plus, they've changed the way that piety works, I think. I don't think they mentioned that here. Or was that maybe a previous expansion? Might have been. But I haven't played as many Muslim nations, so I'm not too sure. And also, I'm kind of intrigued as to what the uh, Timurid government does, because that's something I did not check. Uh, they're just an Icta. Unless it's to do with uh, their special abilities which are mostly to do with subjects and the number of subjects that they have, which is why Ming pissing... Ah, angry. Angry Mordred is angry about that. It's just annoying. Um, but we can promote um, various cultures depending on what culture we are. So with my previous rule, it was promoting Circassian, which made no sense considering Circassia is up here. So we have no Circassians in our realm. But the current one's Egyptian, so any Egyptian stuff gets uh, big modifiers and bonuses. Legalism and mysticism is this DLC. Okay. It's the Muslims get stuff and your army is finally not a levy DLC. Uh, I could build some more marketplaces and things, but I think I'm still going to hold off on that. You guys, mothballed, you are marvellous. And we're still doing all the sneaky, diploy, coverty things that we wanted to do. Good. Who are the Ottomans allied with? Aragon and Akanulu. Akanulu are having some problems there. Allied with the Aragon? Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Tunis is not allied with the Ottomans. In fact, Tunis is only allied with me. I'm still pretty confident about our position at the moment though. Like The Ottomans have not had a good game. The very fact that they failed to take out Byzantium, they failed to take out Albania, and they failed to take or uh, to uh, consolidate the Balkans is just hilarious. And they haven't done anything against these guys yet. Like, the Ottomans are just like, eh, it's fine. Cores are almost done. Boom. We do have some potential uprisings coming. One in two years. But that is also fine because our armies are really quite strong. And we're getting a lot of manpower once again. Fazan is a new rival for Daraj. Fine. And we can do some of the coverts. Uh, Austria is the new emperor and he's done a reform. We can build a spy network in that place. Fabricate claim. Do we want to fabricate both or do we just want to jump in and take it? I have a feeling we just want to kind of jump in and take the place. They're allied with the Lodia, which won't even be able to get through. Probably. I'm going to assume that you wouldn't give me military access. No. Because I was just thinking, I, I could totally just steal a Lodia from under the Ethiopia's nose. But that would be risky because a Lodia would be constantly rising up. And Ethiopia might change that. Uh, military access, because it's likely that they would give me access if I'm at war with uh, Medri Bari, especially if you don't like 
Ethiopia. And then the other one was Najran. Which we have now fabricated on. So we can stop building that spy network. Najran was allied with whom? Najd. So we wanted to start getting claims on Najd. Although... Did I want to just go to war with these guys, or do I want to claim that second province? I'm going to claim it, because I don't particularly want to pay the uh, development costs. So, Najd... Would accept vassalization, hang on. Because that would be even better. No conquest penalties. Sure, I'll offer you an alliance, and then vassalize you. Better do it before I finish uh, annexing those guys, though. Must have relations of plus 190. Alright, so we need to get a move on with this. Would these guys accept? Maybe, actually. And Shamar would also become a vassal. Huh! It would appear that vassalization has become a hell of a lot easier. Urban planning of Cairo. Sultan Jabalut the first was known to be very concerned about urban planning, particularly in Cairo. In 1457, the Sultan gave the order to construct two new public baths in a large communal residence of the Bayan al khazarin district. During the time, he decided to widen the road that originated out of it, the main thoroughfare of Cairo, known as the Kusaba. They demolished several older structures, but in the end, traffic was much quicker, and according to important historians, this greatly benefited the General Republic. Local development cost reduction in Cairo for the rest of the game. And another move toward legalism. Huzzah! We're now at 66. Cool. Very, very good. So in that case, I'm going to stop fabricating on you. And I'm instead going to improve relations with an eye for an alliance. And the Mamelukes are going from their war footing to, oh, we can just do this diplomatically? Well, all right then. Coffee and tobacco. While they are quite new to our society, the use of stimulants such as coffee and tobacco is spread quickly, with coffee houses now a common feature in Alcahara to Saranacia. The popularity is especially marked among the Sufi orders. The novelty of these substances means the religious establishment is divided on their proper use. Many strict legalists want us to limit their use, while others argue for caution, as both coffee and tobacco are very popular in our state. The local governor of Baradia has now turned to Al-Kahira, wanting to close down the local coffee houses that he believes have become meeting places for dissidents. So we can impose restrictions, which means massive unrest in the Saranacia area, or we can let them have their coffee, which is a massive move towards mysticism. Yeah, nothing good comes of coffee or tobacco. Tea, on the other hand, would be like plus 100 legalism. Just done. Um... Right, where's the Cyrenacea area? That would be the first question. Show me the areas. Oh, geographical map. What was this place called? Cyrenacea. My assumption would be that it was up here somewhere, but apparently it's not. There it is. Um, considering I don't even own all of it, I'll take the unrest. Especially as I'm not going to go to war with anyone anytime soon. Like, I can afford to put down rebellions. If called to do so. Technology! Admin! Lovely. And we are once again ahead of time, and we get a new idea group. Huzzah! Ah, now that is a question. Have the ideas changed at all? Prestige decay. I think that used to be a prestige increase, wasn't it? Mercenary maintenance, tech cost, institution, possible advisors, inflation, monthly war exhaustion. Leaders are thou upkeep, advisor cost. No, that's the same. Missionaries, stability, missionary, tolerance, prestige, missionary, CB against heathens and heretics. Culture conversion cost to Lima, monthly loyalty. Those are the same. Taxes, construction cost reduction. Inflation, interest, autonomy, 
Land maintenance, production, development, that's the same. Colonist, merchant. Settlers, growth, recruitment, diplo, shipbuilding, global trade, state maintenance, those are the same. Merc cost, core creation cost, merc maintenance, interest per annum, available mercs, available advisors, admin tech reduction, number of states, that's the same. Religious unity, unrest, heathens, separatism, promoted cultures, idea cost reduction, I think that's the same. Espionage, now actually worth taking. Spy network construction, advisor cost. Advisor cost, that might be new. Diplomats, provincial, yeah, those are the same. Liberty cost, fabricate. Embargo and privateering efficiency, really strong. No, I'm not taking that. I clicked by accident. Rebel support efficiency, those are the same. Diplomats, diplo relations. It kind of looks like these are all the same. Economic, you aren't in Europe, so you need it for technology. Something, something, something. Rule Britannia. Uh, global trade power. No, that's the same. I mean, I'm actually really tempted to say trade. Like, we make a lot of money from trade. And considering all of my national ideas are trade-focused, trade is going to be a big focus for the Mamluks. I think that trade would actually be a very good option for us. These are all looking the same. I don't think they've changed the national ideas at all. Oh, sorry, the uh, generic ideas at all. The military ones might have. Because they've added things like professionalism, so I wonder if there's going to be like a professionalism modifier under quality. Because that would kind of make sense. Absolutism, autonomy, no. Tradition, decay, diplomats... Available mercs. Siege and army. Uh, Amir loyalty. No. Land leader shock. Recruitment time. Land leader fire. Prestige. Siege ability. Those are the same. Defensive. Did defensive always give you army tradition? That I don't remember. I don't remember defensive giving army tradition. Morale, maneuver. Defensive is still such a strong choice. Hey, Margin. Yeah, I mean, I love economic because of that minus 22 development. And I generally try to do a lot of development, though I've realized in recent games that I don't actually do it that often. So I do kind of wonder if it's really as worthwhile as I kind of think it is. Yeah, I knew quality at army tradition. I did not remember that defensive had it. I'm pretty sure that used to be something else. And the battlefield commissions was a quality thing. Cavalry combat ability. Yeah. Durability, morale of navies. Naval tradition, artillery, discipline. Uh, quality was always naval base, and they have the combat abilities. Naval. I didn't remember it was naval morale. Maybe it was? I don't remember that being naval morale. I remember the uh, ship durability and naval attrition. And power recovery, recruitment costs, manned maintenance, available mercs, garrison size, local attrition. Land force limits, naval shock. Yeah, I don't think these ideas have really changed at all. That's really strong. The morale hit from losing a ship uh, reduction is really strong. Especially if you're using, like, galley fleets. Heavy ship plus 20% combat ability. Yikes. Morale of navies, global naval engagement. Yeah, naval ideas are still a really strong choice. Um... I think I'm going to take trade. One thing I just wanted to double check was how much I'm actually making from trade. I'm currently getting four... But that's because we're not in the trade era yet. Like, once the next type of ship becomes available with the level 9, that's when trade starts to take off. But there's no real reason not to start working towards it. Plus, it's a diplomatic idea, which... Am I going to be using diplomatic for anything else? Well, yes, I'm going to have vassals. So, di diplomatic ideas... Actually, uh, sorry, diplomatic points are going to be important. Which is one reason to go economic, because I'm not going to be coring as much stuff. 
And national tax, we do make a lot of money from taxes. An awful lot of money from taxes. And we're building mosques at the moment, really quite rapidly. Construction costs would be good. Tax modifier would be good. I love me loans. And the loan modifiers for that are really strong. Also, we're making a surprising amount from production. Yeah, we're going economic. It does seem like the strongest option. Anyway, with that, I'm afraid that I'm going to have to end this stream here. So, Marjorie, you arrived just too late. I'm sorry about that. Um, I will be resuming in two hours, although that will be for Hearts of Iron 4. I'm going to be playing or continuing the SIM game on Hearts of Iron 4 for a couple of hours. And then again at midnight tonight, I will be doing some more um, EU4. So, midnight tonight, I'll be continuing with the Mamluks. I'm so gutted the Timurids were terrible so gutted about that because I really wanted to play as them but I'm really enjoying the Mamluks like I've never really see have I've, I've never really had the Middle East appeal to me at all but they definitely are like the flavor stuff that they've added here is really cool I like how all the different nations means that diplomacy is a lot more important in the Middle East rather than just slapping a couple of the big guys like the Ottomans and the fact that the Mamluks are now a viable power versus the Ottomans is fantastic and I love the fact the Ottomans are losing actually <laughs> It, it gives me great pleasure. So, yes, I'm enjoying this at the Mamluks. Timur, it's not so much, but I like the changes. I love the army professionalism changes. That is probably the biggest highlight thus far for me. I am intrigued by the changes to the advisors and the fact that they now have... Oh, uh, gosh, where are they? I've forgotten how to play this game. The fact that they have culture and um, religions as well and the modifiers that that can add through the different government forms. So they are doing a lot of things right here. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what else changes in the future, like how supply depots work. For example, I think that's just going to increase uh, supply in various areas, but I don't know how you build them, what they cost, any of that stuff. So this is all stuff to yet to discover, uh, especially just going forwards and then seeing whether the Timurids can actually survive and uh, bring themselves back again. So that is the end of the stream. Like I said, I will be streaming again in two hours. That will be Hot of Iron 4, where we're going to be playing as I am. And then after that, at midnight tonight, I will be playing as uh, the Mamluks again. Uh, so I hope you join me for that. If you're unable to make those, then I will be streaming again tomorrow. Uh, basically the same schedule. So 3 o'clock, EU4, 8 o'clock, Hearts of Iron. But nothing at midnight, because I actually kind of want a decent night's sleep on Sunday. And then Monday, I will be also streaming, which I don't usually do on Mondays. Um, if you want to see any of these details, by the way, you can go to my Discord, uh, where I've put them up in the announcements. So uh, check out the announcements on Discord there. I have the current stream schedule, because it's a little bit uh, crazy, thanks to the preview. If Crusader Kings 2 wasn't releasing on the same sodding day as EU4, I would be trying to do some more Crusader Kings. I might do that during the week. Uh, basically depending on how this EU4 series goes. Also, there will be a multiplayer game of Crusader Kings 2 happening next Saturday. Um, that is going to be in conjunction with Bundeswehr Bob and NG Paradox, I think was the other one. Uh, basically, the idea this is a fantastic idea, I have to say. Uh, Bob came up with this, so full credit to him. But I will be playing as a king um, of one of the nations. And then you guys will be my vassals. So anyone who is a Mordred Viking supporter here can play as a Mordred Viking vassal. I think we're limited to only four people, which will be priority to the patrons because they pay for that privilege. More about this will be announced in the next couple of days, but it should be really, really good fun. So I'm playing as a king. Bob is playing as a king. NG Paradox is playing as a king. I think it's NG Paradox. I'm double check that. Uh... Yeah, NG Paradox is the other one. So there's going to be three kings, and then each of us have, as our vassals, uh, supporters of our individual channels. So it should be a lot of fun. It should have a lot of very interesting internal politics as well as multiplayer external politics. And we'll have, like, a royal envoy who is assigned to go and talk to the other guys rather than us doing it ourselves. Um, this won't be streamed. This will be put up on YouTube, though. Um, so, yeah, next Saturday, stay tuned for details about that. If you are a patron, you get priority passes, essentially to it so if you want to get that kind of advantage then i would urge you to check out patreon and also if you just want to support me at all there and the fact that you can name generals and things now means that i should probably start doing that naming generals after subscribers and the like in eu4 so uh, if you want to see your name appear there uh patreon subscription or uh, sorry a twitch subscription would work as well uh, finally i have a youtube channel which is where i've been rambling about this uh you will be able to find this eu4 series will be uh, posted up there. Part of the reason I'm taking a break now is so I can get some of this stuff rendered and uploaded um, so that the YouTubers can check it out. 
So thank you everyone for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed this and I will catch you guys in about two hours time. Goodbye.